weekend. We are live. The weekend has begun Friday night. Most of you are out making money while I'm YouTubing away here. Uh, if you're in your cars right now and you're just about to pick someone up, please drive safe um, and uh, have a great weekend. Share your numbers with me on Monday, in Our House Monday. So I have a pretty cool topic here, and we're going to go way, way back in time. 49 of the biggest scandals in Uber's history. What do you think could be in there? 49 of the biggest scandals in Uber's history. So I don't know who's more scandalous, this dude here or our favorite not Darrow Koshishawi. All righty, so let's kick it off. Uber went public um, Friday, May the 10th, in one of the biggest IPOs ever, but news hasn't always been so rosy for the company, and that, that's Friday is long, long gone. Over the years, Uber has been plagued by a long list of scandals, ranging from reports of sexual harassment to aggressive strategies to take down the competition, right? Here's a look at the biggest scandals that have rocked the company over the last decade. Uh, read more stories um, like this on Business Insider. I'm subscribed to Insider, so I will share the link there with you. And um, this probably doesn't even include 2020 and 2021 scandals. Uber went public. Um, on Friday, May the 10th, this is a while back, in one of the biggest IPOs in history, the major move paints a rosy picture for the company, but over the years, a series of scandals helped define the thriving organization's legacy as one mired in scandal, starting with our favorite, Travis Cordell Kalanick. Now, Uber's controversies range from arguably unethical business strategies to sexual assault allegations. Here's a look back at the scandals that came before Uber went public at an initial market cap of $75.5 billion. We have David Garcia in the house. He says, Alto Driven, we have 21 cars in around LA as of today, and we are growing. I know, I got some Alto updates. That's, that's amazing. And you're one of the first ones in LA to join. Silly Goose says Uber driving was the most stressful job ever I, I've ever had, due uh, mostly to their management, 100%. And, you know, management failing and not doing anything on safety and security for drivers. I mean, just, just today uh, in Chicago, passengers shot a driver. You know, I'll make, a, I'll make another video on that. Um, check this out. Jumping a little back here. Drivers, Uber sued in University Avenue crashes. That's not the one. This one here. In the Chicago Sun-Times, passenger shoots Lyft driver during botched carjacking on West Side. So, you know, these are, these are several of the scandals they don't even talk about, right? They're just mentioning... Um, the, the, the biggest ones here in this article. So we got to dive back in there. So October 2010, uh, 11 years ago, Uber Cab received, receives its first cease and desist. That's what they called themselves at the time, Uber Cab. And it received its first cease and desist in 2010. We'll break it down for you. What exactly happened there? According to New York's magazine, extensive list of Uber's ups and downs, the company's first scandal came before the startup changed its name from Uber Cab to Uber. Four months after launching in San Francisco, the San Francisco Metro Transit Authority and the Public Utilities Commission of California issued a cease and desist order. Ha ha. Uber Cab changed its name to Uber. Six years later, San Francisco would have roughly 45,000 Uber drivers compared to just 2,026 licensed taxis. So they ignored it. They changed the name and they carried on. January 2000, 
2012, Uber gets slammed in its first major surge pricing backlash. That was in 2012. Uber told customers that prices would increase due to increased demand on New Year's Eve. However, people were still furious when they were forced to pay three to six times the normal amount to get a ride. And that went down in 2012. November 2012, prices soared during Hurricane Sandy. I remember that. Timothy says, remember the driver who hit a kid after driving on duty for more than 20 hours in San Francisco? Could be in this article. Could be in here. Maybe they worked this in. So November 2012, prices soared during Hurricane Sandy with most public transportation down in New York City. Uh, Uber, Ubers were in high demand, leading to prices doubling after being accused to, um, to prowse, uh, price gouging. The company made prices revert back to normal while continuing to pay drivers two times the rate. September 2013, a passenger accuses an Uber driver of choking her. That almost happens daily now, right? That's like nothing new. September 2013, a passenger accuses an Uber driver of choking her. Washington, D.C. resident Bridget Todd tweeted that a driver grabbed her out of her car by her throat because she was kissing her husband. The driver said that Todd was extremely intoxicated and had been behaving aggressively and a fight had broken out between them. Interesting. Valley Wag reported that CEO Travis Kalanick emailed the company's press team at the time, blaming the media for thinking that Uber is somehow liable for these incidents that aren't even real in the first place. Really, Travis, is that how you handle it, dude? Seriously, come on, man. Um, now, December 2013, Uber drivers file a lawsuit against the company. Um, the suit filed on behalf of 350,000 current former Uber drivers in California and Massachusetts claims that drivers should be treated as employees. Uber would have to pay minimum wage and provide benefits such as health insurance. The case was settled out of court in 2016. And when was it filed again? It was filed in December 2013. So three years later, Uber settles it out of court. Uh, the next scandal that rocked Uber. January 2014, Uber employees purposefully, purposefully waste rival drivers' time. Yep, I also heard about that one. So let me... Check that out there. What do they say? Uh, Uber employees have been po uh, posing as pedestrians, creating get accounts for the sole purpose of scheduling and then canceling get rides. Uh, Valley Wag Sam Biddle reported, the result is clear. Waste of time for get drivers, few available rides for get users, and general disarray for the whole service. According to Valley Wag top Uber executives in New York City were allegedly um, involved in the plan and would try and convince the drivers to work for Uber. At, at the time, Uber called the strategy a sales tactic that got too aggressive. That's, again, under Travis Kalanick. In January 2014, uh, reports emerged that an Uber driver accused of assault has a criminal record. That, my friends, is almost happening daily now. So I'll jump into that one. Give me one second. Um, here we go. Pando reported that an Uber driver who allegedly called a user, that's disgusting, a dirty um, Mexican, did, 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 had a criminal record including felony and misdemeanor charges and at least one felony conviction involving prison time. Charming. February 2014, Kalanick calls Uber Booba. 
prompting question regarding the company's treatment of women. A GQ profile of the CEO reads, when I tease him about his skyrocketing desirability, he deflects with a wise crack about women on demand. Yeah, we call that booba, booba. In the same profile, Kalanick says he'd rather be clubbing than working when he's in Miami. Unsurprisingly, many saw this as a red flag for the company's culture. Yep, that's when the culture started to turn south. South Coast Ride, um, you are a business getting referrals from Uber. Uh, people need to stop talking about Uber as a job. It's an app that refers customers. Okay, what are we? What are you going to do with that, buddy? Seriously, thank you for educating us. August two thousand fourteen, Uber is slammed for trying to undermine Lyft. Uh, the Verge reported Uber is arming teams of independent contractors with burner phones and credit cards as part of its sophisticated effort to undermine Lyft and other competitors. Similar to attempts to waste get drivers time, Uber reportedly used this as a strategy to undermine Lyft and other rivals. 2014, Uber is criticized for sexism after hot chicks promotion. Interesting. One second, I'm almost just getting a quick message done here. So, Teddy, ah, you're right, South Coast, right? Teddy T, good evening. There are so many of these horrible stories out there. The one I remember is sheriff's deputy in Florida who shot a guy in self-defense. Uber deactivated him. He was a cop. Wow. I remember that. Uber's branch in Lyon, France, debuted a promotion to pair Uber customers with hot chick drivers. After backlash, the promotion was quickly killed and scrubbed from the internet. And who came up with that? Obviously, um, Travis Kalanick. Yes. Travis Kalanick came up with that wonderful idea. So, um, I'm not surprised that someone inside the company took Kalanick's callous attitude towards female riders and comments like Booba to mean that shocking level of exploitation and disrespect was appropriate, that it would even be celebrated by headquarters, Pando Sarah Lacey wrote in the incident. November 2014, a senior executive suggests that the company should dig up dirt on reporters that cover Uber. That's how they try to retaliate, right? Uh, yeah, self-defense, indeed. BuzzFeed reported that Emil Michael, then Uber senior vice president of business, suggested that Uber should invest in opposition research on reporters during a private dinner he believed to be off the record. Over dinner, he outlined the notion of spending a million dollars to hire four top opposition researchers and four journalists. BuzzFeed reported that that team could, he said, help Uber fight back against the press. They'd look into your personal lives, your families, and give the media a taste of its own medicine. That's how they play the game, right? Well, we're busy giving Uber a taste of their own medicine by outsmarting them constantly. Um, so Michael said he regretted the comments and that they didn't reflect his or Uber's views. December 2014, Uber is banned in Delhi after rape accusation. The region of India banned Uber after a passenger reported that she was taken into a secluded area and raped by her driver. May 2015, the next scandal. Uber reportedly poaches 50 employees from Carnegie Mellon's top robotics lab. The Verge reported Uber snatched up about 50 people from Car Carnegie Mellon, including many from its highest ranks. That's an unusual 
unusually high number of people to leave at once and accounted for about a third of the staff NREC had at the end of last year. June 2015, French taxi drivers slam Uber as economic terrorism. Je suis taxi. Um, French officials investigated the company and taxi drivers strike to protest the company's attempts to expand its low-cost Uber pop service. Economic terrorism is the favored term of Parisian taxi drivers for Uber's low prices, flexible hours, and the way it's operating outside of French law. French courts cracked down on Uber, and Uber pop was discontinued in the country. Sherelle, good to see you in Long Beach today, man. Hopefully you got everything sorted out. January 2016, Uber strikes a settlement following concerns regarding God view tracking. I remember that. In November 2014, BuzzFeed reported that Uber had tracked one of its reporters using a tool nicknamed God view that allowed the company to track cars and see personal information of the drivers in the cars. Uber struck a settlement with the New York Attorney General ending an investigation into the company's privacy practices, including its use of GuardView. The company paid 20,000 fine for not disclosing a data breach in a timely manner. It also removed personal information from tracking and limited which employees could use the tool. Next scandal, February 2016, Uber agrees to pay $20.85 million to end a lawsuit about safety ads. Uber agreed to pay $28.5 million uh, to 25 million riders after plaintiffs in two lawsuits argued the company misled customers about safety practices. As part of the settlement, Uber must refrain from using certain superlatives like industry-leading or best-in-class when describing its background checks. Interesting. Oh, Nick fixed your car early. Good. Nick's a legend. Nick is a legend. February 2016, Uber driver accused of shooting eight people. What the heck? Uh, Uber driver Jason Dalton is accused of shooting eight people, six fatally around Kalamazoo, Michigan. Dalton had no criminal history and passed Uber's background checks. Dalton's rating as an Uber driver was good, according to its chief security officer, Joe Sullivan. In March, Dalton blamed Uber for the attack when he said to investigators that the app made him like a puppet. May 2016, Uber pulls out of Austin, Texas after teaming up with Lyft to spend more than $8 million campaigning to change laws in the city. Voters ultimately backed a law that requires drivers to get fingerprint background checks despite Uber and Lyft's expensive campaign against the measure. August 2016, judge rejects Uber's $100 million settlement with drivers. In April, um, Uber announced that it had agreed to settle a court case brought by drivers in California and Massachusetts for $84 million, $100 million if the company goes public at a higher valuation. Judge Edward Chen denied the plaintiff's motion to settle the case, saying that it was neither fair nor accurate, citing the tipping policy as one change not nearly as valuable as the settlement had suggested. December 2016, Kalanick, announces he will join Trump's Economic Advisory Council along with other business leaders. In January, the delete Uber, hashtag delete Uber movement led to a flurry of account deletions by customers upset about the company's ties to President Trump. The company lost more than 200,000 customers in just one weekend. That's crazy. January 2017, Uber is accused of attempting to profit off of taxi drivers' strike. In January 2017, Uber was accused of attempting to profit off 
of a taxi worker strike at JFK Airport when it suspended surge pricing to and from the airport after a taxi union announced the action. Uber defended itself by saying that the surge price suspension actually came 30 minutes after the strike had ended, but the confusion only added to January's hashtag delete Uber fervor. February 2017, a female engineer who used to work at Uber publishes a blog about sexual harassment and gender inequality at the company. Susan Fowler writes in a blog post that she was sexually harassed at Uber and experienced gender bias during her time at the company. I remember that. She claims a manager propositioned her and asked for sex, but she says her complaints to Uber's human resource department were dismissed because the manager was a high performer. Uber CEO Travis Kalanick immediately pledges to look into Fowler's allegations and the company hires Eric Holder, a former U.S. Attorney General, to lead an independent investigation into its workplace culture. In a follow-up story, the New York Times reported Uber employees allegedly did cocaine during a company retreat and the manager had to be fired after groping multiple women. Charming. February 2017, Uber investors blast the company for cultural shortcomings. In an open letter to Uber and Uber's investors and board, uh, Frida and Mitch Capo say Uber has ignored the years-long behind-the-scenes efforts to posit positively influence the company's culture. We are speaking up now. Uh, we are disappointed and frustrated. We feel we have hit a dead end in trying to influence the company quietly from the inside. February 2017, the scandals continue. Another ride-hailing service sues Uber over claims of property theft. I remember that. Waymo, formerly Google's self-driving car division, accuses Uber of using stolen technology to advance its own autonomous car development. The suit claims a team of ex-Google engineers stole Waymo's design for the laser sensor that allows self-driving cars to map the environment around them. February 2017. Oh, I remember this one. Do you guys remember this one? Kalanick is caught fighting with an Uber drive on camera. There he is there. Caught on a dash cam, Travis. Uh, Bloomberg publishes a video showing Kalanick losing his cool in an argument with an Uber driver after the driver confronted him about reduced fares. Kalanick issues a profound apology and says he'll seek leadership help. My job as your leader is to lead, and that starts with behaving in a way that makes us all proud, he wrote in, an, in his apology note. That is not what I did, and it cannot be explained away. This is the first time I've been willing to admit that I need leadership help and intend to get it. Quite a bold statement there by Travis. March 2017. The New York Times reveals Uber has been secretly deceiving authorities for years with a tool called Grayball. Uber used the tool to evade authorities, particularly at times when city regulators were trying to block the ride-hailing service. The tool collected data from Uber's app to identify and evade officials in cities like Boston, Paris, and Las Vegas. Times reports that the program was used in markets where Uber was banned or being resisted by law enforcement. March 2017, executives flee the company. Five executives left the company in less than a month in late February and early March, including Uber's senior vice president of engineering, Amit Singhal, who stepped down amid allegations of sexual harassment. Singhal, who passed Uber's standard background checks before joining the company, strenuously denied the allegations. March 2017, Travis Kalanick visit to a Seoul Escort karaoke bar is revealed. A report by 
The information describes a 2014 visit by an Uber team to an escort karaoke bar in Seoul, South Korea. According to the report, four male Uber managers picked women out of the group, calling out their numbers and sat with them. After the evening, a female employee told the company's HR department the trip made her uncomfortable, according to the report. April, buddy got Amesh, how are you doing, buddy? Happy weekend to everyone. It's Friday, folks. Go out there and make money. Or stay at home and have a great weekend with your family. April 2017, a report claims Apple CEO Tim Cook had threatened to yank Uber's app from the App Store. Did not know that. Interesting. The New York Times reports Cook accused Uber of violating the App Store's terms and conditions. Uber had incorporated into its app a small piece of code that could identify particular phones even after they had been wiped of their data. The ride-hailing company had included the code to prevent fraud, according to the report. The software allowed the company to detect if someone was using the same phone over and over again, but wiping it repeatedly to take advantage of promo codes. Interesting. May Uber has to pay out millions after a bad accounting error. Uh, Uber reveals an accounting mistake caused it to shortchange its drivers in New York City for years. Uber tells drivers in New York City it will repay them tens of millions of dollars after it took more than its share of the fares customers paid for the rides. On average, most drivers in the city will, will receive about $900. Wow. June, Uber fires over 20 people for bad behavior. Uber fires more than 20 employees as a result of its internal investigation. The company says it received 215 complaints uh, during its inquiry into inappropriate behavior at its workplace, with the highest number of complaints related to discrimination, sexual harassment, and unprofessional behavior. June the 7th, Uber fires a senior executive for carrying around Indian rape victims' medical records. Uber fires its head of Asia business, Eric, Eric Alexander. Alexander had been reportedly carrying around the medical records of a rape victim from India for a year and had shown them to other top executives. Uber's top executives, including Kalanick, allegedly looked at the records and pointed to them while internally questioning whether the rape occurred, according to to a report in Recode. The executives also speculated that one of Uber's rivals in India could have been using the report of the rape to undermine the company there. A day later, the victim sues Uber over the mishandling of her private information. Right Chair Road Warrior Rick, good to see you. June 8th, the infamous Miami letter becomes public. Recode publishes an internal message the CEO sent before the 2013 event, reading a lot like what a college fraternity president might send out to his brothers, the email which Kalanick sent out to hundreds of employees before the 2013 event, and again the following year spelled out the company's rule about drinking and sex. June, Uber's business chief and Kalanick confident is pushed out. Uber's business chief, Emil Michael, is forced to resign amid board pressure, bringing the number of executives to leave the company since the beginning of the year to an even dozen. Emil Michael had overseen Uber's broader business strategy, including its partnerships and fundraising. Michael, who has known to have a direct role in several of Uber's scandals, resigns as the company nears the completion of its internal investigation. He blames the board, not his own behavior, for his departure from the company. July 2017, Kalanick reportedly says he plans to return as CEO just a month after stepping down. Kalanick resigned as Uber's CEO in June uh, after investors demanded that he step down following an internal investigation into the company's culture. The ex-CEO told several people at the company 
that he was Steve Job, Jobsing it, a reference to the co-founder of Apple who was fired from the company but later returned and turned it into the world's most valuable firm, according to Recode. Board members later shot down rumors that Kalanick would return. August 2017, reports emerged that Uber knowingly rented cars that were at risk of catching fire to its drivers in Singapore. Interesting. A Wall Street Journal report that says internal emails show Uber managers in Singapore were aware of an April 2016 recall on Honda's Vezel SUV, but continued to rent the cars to drivers without fixing the defect. Honda recalled the car because it could catch on fire. It's unclear whether Uber's executives in San Francisco or then CEO Travis Kalanick knew of the recall. August 2017, a VC venture capitalist files a lawsuit against Kalanick. An early Uber investor benchmark capital sued Kalanick over claims he committed fraud in 2016. The suit centers on the creation of three additional board seats at Uber in June 2016, which benchmark argued Kalanick is using to slow down its exit from the company. Ray C. Branch is in the house. How are you? Good to see you, buddy. Happy weekend. September 2017. September 2017, Uber loses its license to operate in London. Transport for London said Uber was not fit and proper to hold a license. Business Insider UK reported. It said the company's approach to um, reporting serious driver offenses, approach to driver medical and safety checks, and use of its secret Grable software to dodge transport officials all contributed to its decision. August 2017, United States Justice Department announces investigation into whether Uber violated foreign bribery laws. Oh, my God, they're in, they're in crap everywhere. The DOJ is examining allegations that Uber may have violated the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. The law makes it illegal for individuals and organizations to pay foreign government officials in order to obtain or retain business. That definitely took place. Bloomberg and Reuters both reported that the American ride-hailing company has been looking into multiple payments in Indonesia, Malaysia, and elsewhere. October 2017, news breaks Apple gave Uber's app unprecedented access to sensitive Apple, Apple features that can record iPhone screens. Uber's iPhone app has a secret backdoor to powerful Apple features allowing the ride-hailing service to potentially record a user screen and access other personal information without their knowledge. The access to special iPhone functions, which are so powerful that Apple almost always keeps them off limits to outside companies, is not disclosed in any consumer-facing information included with Uber's app. November 2017. Rand Sabellet says, I'm from Fontana, California. I was deactivated for no reason. They never fully explained to me how I called a duplicate account. So let them burn in hell because I quit Uber since last month. Duplicate account. I can't really. How are you going to duplicate an account? But I would fight that. November 2017, news breaks alleging that Uber tried to cover up a cyber attack that impacted millions of customers. Bloomberg reported that Uber paid hackers $100,000 to cover up a cyber attack that exposed 57 million people's personal data. While the breach occurred in October 2016, it only became public when Uber published a blog post on the attack in November 2017. Uber's then CEO Kalanick was reportedly aware of the breach a month after it occurred. None of this should have happened, and I will not make excuses for it. Dara Koshashawi joined Uber as CEO in September, wrote in the post, we are changing the way we do business, putting integrity at the core of every decision. Please don't make me laugh, Dara. 
We make we make and working hard to earn the trust of our customers. Please don't make me laugh. February 2018, Uber settles with Waymo. Uber agreed to fork over 245 million worth of equity to settle the much watched lawsuit brought against the company by self-driving competitor Waymo. Uh, one second. In a statement, CEO Dara Kosher Shawi effectively apologized, saying he wanted to express regret for the actions and that we agree that Uber's acquisition of Otto could, also, uh, could and should have been handled differently. <coughs> March 2018, an Uber self-driving car strikes and kills Elaine Hertzberg in one of the first recorded pedestrian deaths involving an autonomous vehicle. On March 18, a self-driving Uber test vehicle struck and killed Elaine in Tempe, Arizona, while in autonomous mode. It was one of the first times recorded that a self-driving vehicle was involved in the death of a pedestrian. Halsberg was crossing the road at night outside of a crosswalk, but the Uber vehicle didn't slow down after she entered the road and hit her at 39 miles per hour. Uh, Business Insider suggests that the car's threshold for braking in response to recognized objects had been reduced, potentially in an effort to create a more pleasant ride after the car necessarily put on the brakes in response to things like tree branches. Uber paused its self-driving program in response to the death, but rebooted it in December 2018. April 2018, CNN reveals that over 100 U.S. Uber driver had been accused of sexual assault or abuse of passengers. On April the 30th, CNN revealed that court records and police reports showed that over 100 U.S. Uber drivers had been accused of sexual assault or abuse of passengers. According to CNN, Uber announced that preventing sexual assault was a new company priority in the run-up to the publishing of the investigation, saying that it would start running yearly background checks on its drivers. July 2018, Uber HR chief resigns after discrimination probe. Following a Reuters report that she had repeatedly dismissed allegations of discrimination at the company and allegedly made disparaging and discriminatory remarks about the company's head of diversity, former Uber HR chief Lion Hornsey resigned from the company in an email. Hornsey did not specify why she was leaving in the email, but it followed an investigation into the report from law firm Gibson Dunn, who allegedly substantiated unspecified portions of the allegations. September 2018, Uber agrees to pay $148 million following 2016 data breach. In September, in a settlement with attorneys general from every U.S. state, Uber agreed to pay $148 million for legal disputes around a data breach that affected 57 million users in 2016. The breach exposed information that included driver's license numbers, names, phone numbers, and was revealed in a November 2017 report. Instead of notifying regulators and those affected by the breach at the time, Uber paid the hackers, listen to this, Travis Kalanick, Uber paid the hackers $100,000 in an attempt to get rid of the information. October 2018, Saudi murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi raises questions about Uber funding. Following the news that the Saudi Arabian government most likely assassinated journalist Jamal Khashoggi, as we know now from the CIA that did happen, Uber and other companies began to take heed for their association with the Saudi government through their funding ventures. In November, Uber CEO Dara Khashoggi said he was anxious over the news, which inspired a call for a boycott from Bahrain's foreign minister. Uber took $3.5 billion from Saudi Arabia's public investment fund and has majority investment from SoftBank, whose vision fund is backed by the Saudi government. The Saudi royal family has a seat 
on Uber's board as a result of those investments. Eventually, the controversy fizzled and Uber announced that it would acquire its largest competitor in the Middle East, Kareem. In 2019, April 2019, Uber announces new safety initiative after student killed in fake Uber pickup. University of South Carolina student Samantha Josephson was allegedly murdered in late March after getting into a car that she mistakenly thought was her Uber. Following the incident, Uber announced that it would hold campus awareness events about safety, send notification reminding riders to verify their drivers, and run ads reminding users about steps they can take to verify that they are getting into the right car. Following the death, the South Carolina House of Representatives passed a bill that would require ride-sharing drivers to post illuminated company signs. May 2019, Uber and Lyft drivers strike ahead of IPO. I remember that all too well. Uber and Lyft drivers around the world, world called for a strike against the company one day ahead of its IPO. Drivers complained about falling wages and a lack of transparency after fees and costs it estimated that on average Uber drivers take home about $9.00. And 21 cents per hour. Now, those were 49 scandals, my friends. Um, and that that just goes up to 2019. You and I know how many scandals came out in 2020 and 2021, right? So that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? These 49. It's way, way more. Anyways, I just wanted to wish you all a fantastic weekend. Smash that like button, everyone. Have a great, great weekend, either with your family or if you're working tonight, please be safe, drive safe, wear those masks, disinfect the cars. I'll be back on Our House Mondays um, uh, with a nice long session, live session, and then uh, we'll have a couple of other videos coming out over the weekend. Please share, and if you know of any other scandals that I can highlight in a follow-up, you're uh, more than welcome to list them. John Camillo, what's up? As I'm leaving, John Camillo comes in. Have a great, great weekend, John. Sherelle, Ransom, Ray, uh, Road Warrior Rick, Badiga, um, all of you, be safe out there. South Coast, Rye, David Garcia, Silly Goose, Timothy, have an amazing weekend, everyone, and thank you. Private Platinum, Craig in the house. Cheers. Have a good one, buddy. Um, Looking forward to our next live feed. Thank you so much, everyone. Good night.